boys and girls. Boys and girls, today <clears throat> we are going to be reviewing inference, <clears throat> making inference. When you make <clears throat> when you make an inference, you add your own knowledge and experience to figure out what the author is not saying. You can almost think about it as reading <clears throat> between the lines. Okay. Can you infer <clears throat> where I am? So, as I just said, think about it as reading between the lines. You have a little bit of information that the author is giving you, and then you're going to add it to what <clears throat> you already know about the topic. So, let's look at this one. Can you infer where I am? I heard a loud thwack as the ball leaves the ballpark, and the crowd roars with cheers. Where do you think I am? Think about what you know. Are there any clues in here to help you know where my location is? If you said I am at a ballpark or a baseball game, you will be absolutely correct. And how I know that is, I think about what I know about baseball. I know that there's a ball. And then there's a ballpark and there was a crowd there and it's roaring. And that onomatopoeia here, right? The sound of the bat hitting the ball helps me to know that, or I can make an inference that I'm most likely going to be at a baseball game. Can you infer here what I am doing and where I am? I see bubbles rising. I hear my own breathing. There are fish swimming above me. I feel the seaweed swaying around me. Now, this will be a little bit more challenging because of <clears throat> you may not have very much experience, right, with some of the clues that are here. But I want you to think about what you can hold on to, okay? Now, when it says that I see bubbles rising, I can hear my own breathing. There are fish swimming above me. So that means you must be below water somewhere, right? If fish are swimming and they're above you, you must be below water. So in my mind, as a student, I may not know what it feels like to have seaweed swinging against me. But I do know where fish swim, right? And so I can infer that I am most likely in the ocean, right? I'm not going to be in a swimming pool because fish wouldn't be in a swimming pool. Seaweed wouldn't be in a swimming pool. So if you said that I am in the ocean and I may be snorkeling, right because of the bubbles coming up and i can hear my own breathing then you're absolutely correct good job okay what can you infer from this statement raul always carried his flute with him hmm. what can i think about that i may not have ever played a flute before but i know that a flute is an instrument right and I think about me when I have something that I'm really interested in. I really carry it around a lot. And I would think that if he's carrying it, he's just not carrying it just because he wants to. He's probably practicing, right? He has it with him just in case he wants to practice or he may want to play <clears throat> for someone that he's near or someone else that might be in his company, okay? Let's try this one. What can you infer about Denise's mother? After Denise broke her trophy, her mother turned and walked away without saying anything. Now, this one should be super, super easy because I can say we probably have all been in this situation where we have possibly knocked something over, um, 
or we might have actually broken something like Denise did after our grown-ups have told us either to maybe stop running in the house or stop horse playing around, you know, with your relatives or what have you. And then something unfortunate or an accident happens where something gets broken, right? So you want to think about what's going on. Well, we know mom turned and walked away without saying anything. And so when I think about this, I know that, hmm, parents, not just moms, but when they walk away and they don't say anything, they're probably not very happy with what has taken place, right? And so if something has been broken, you can infer that mom is not happy about it. She was just beside herself. She just had to walk away. Okay. So what I want you to do <clears throat> is Ms. Johnson's going to have a, a couple of anchor charts there. And I want you to make sure that you are recording the anchor charts down in your reading journal. And you are also going to watch a video here shortly. And then after you do that, you are going to practice again on your own with a quick little Kahoot on making inferences, okay? Now, Ms. Johnson, where are we going with this? Um, the plan was for you guys to go over inferencing today. And then we were going to read a drama because we are still working with our dramas. And we're going to make some inferences about some of the things that our characters are doing in the play. But since Ms. Johnson is having a little bit of a rough time speaking today, um, I had to kind of switch it up a little bit, okay? And so hopefully we'll be able to read our drama like we love to do uh, so much together tomorrow, okay? So again, um, I want you guys to make sure that you check the course. I want you to record the angle charts that deal with making inference, okay? Then after you do that, you're going to watch the video. And then once you watch that video, then you guys are going to have a little practice on your own with the Kahoot, okay? And if there is time left, then you guys are going to navigate to your Education Galaxy suggested study plan, okay? All right, so hopefully Ms. Johnson will um, see you all tomorrow. And I want you to be making emphasis all day today, right? Be looking at any clues that are around you, adding those to what you already know, and just see if you can find some ways to practice making inferences today. All right, Ms. Johnson, we'll see you on the other side.